Public art is an art in any media whose form, function, and meaning are created for the general public through a public process. It is a specific art genre with its own professional and critical discourse. Public art is visually and physically accessible to public. It is installed or staged in public space or the public realm, usually outside. Public art seeks to embody public or universal concept rather than commercial, partisan or personal concept or interest. Notably, public art is also a direct or indirect product of a public process of creation, procurement and or maintenance. That is according to Wikipedia. Hi, I am Lanria Jai and I'm reaching you now on channel 1973.1 DT on people, places and events. This is My City Speaks to Me, the Calgary edition from around my beautiful city of Calgary here in Sutton Boulevard, Southeast Calgary, Alberta, Canada. About three years ago, when the trailer of this storytelling project was originally released, I promised my community that when my city speaks to me, I'll speak to you. In fulfilling my promise, as I've been doing with these monthly stories from my city and beyond, my city spoke, and I'm here to tell you what my city is speaking to me. Today, on this episode, I want to tell you stories about mirrors, sculpture, and all the general public arts with a focus on majestic creative works by artists in Calgary and beyond. According to Article 26 by Army's Public Art Commission of Nova Scotia, public art adds enormous value to cultural, aesthetic, and economic vitality of a community. It is now a well-accepted principle of urban design that public art contributes to a community's identity, fosters community pride and a sense of belonging, and enhances the quality of life for its residents and visitors. On this episode of My City Speaks to Me, I'll be taking you around the city, showcasing some of the vibrant public art works, adorning walls of schools, buildings, sidewalks, underpass, and other public places around Calgary. Now, one cool thing about public art is that it is free. I like that. It's also accessible to everybody and not confined to museums and galleries, where in some cases, you'll have to pay to see them. It adds value to our physical environment, bringing streetscapes, plazas, town buildings, and schools to life. It also is a great tool for civic engagement, building social capital, and encouraging civil discourse by providing professional opportunities for artists and cultivating an environment in which critical class thrives. Furthermore, it boosts local economies and acts as a magnet for tourism. Even more important, they help educate and inspire our citizens and stimulate creativity in the workplace and in our schools. In a past survey conducted by the Joint Legislative Committee on Cultural Affairs in New York, it indicated that 99% of chief executive officers who were questioned stated that availability of cultural activities in an area is an important consideration in choosing a new location. Businesses supply materials and labor Restaurants, hotels, and transportation companies benefit from a site that attracts visitors. It is an investment in placemaking measured by livability and quality of life that also engenders community pride. Public art connects citizens to their neighbors and their shared history through documentation and celebration and makes cultural heritage a tangible community asset. A bright in places where people work, which can improve employees' morale, productivity, and respect. In our schools, it creates a supportive learning environment, opening the eyes and minds and attracting students to environments conducive to both learning and fun. What more can I say that it raises public awareness about important community issues such as environmental stewardship and respect for diversity and inclusivity. Now, enough of this lecture. I can go on and on, but what I'm saying is that public art is good for you and for me. Anyway, I hope you understand why public art is essential to the total well-being of you and me plus our environment. Now, to my favorite segment of this show, countdown to my best 10 public art in Calgary. I'm gonna be showing you my best 10 public art pieces in Calgary, starting from number 10. At number 10, moving fence and on, right behind me. This majestic art piece was created during the summer of 2002 by John McEwen. Born in Toronto in 1945 and best known for his use of stars 
as sculptural elements as well as naturalistic images and flame cut from massive metal slabs. Located right here on the corner of 4th Street and 4th Avenue Southwest, right in front of TransCanada Tower. Now, massive building. The artist tried to convey the undulation of fences across the rolling prairies that also function as a windbreak. The final weight of the horn is 16 tons and the fence is 0.75 tons. The horn has a footprint of 30 feet by 30 feet and rises to an arc of 24 feet. It curves as the natural arms on wood and meets the earth at either hand. At number 9, is the Chinook Arc, commissioned by City of Calgary Parks and completed in 2014 by artists Joe O'Connell and Blessing Hancock of Creative Machines. This sculpture is located here at Bob Scott Park, here in Calgary, with dimensions of 28 by 15 feet, and it's made from steel, acrylic, LED lighting, electronics, touch sensors. The artwork is an interactive illuminated sculpture that emits a soft internal glow. The concept reflects our impression of Bedline as a well-defined, confident and vibrant community. The shape draws inspiration from a story Bedline streetcar loop that once encircled the neighborhood, as well as the Chinook Arc phenomenon that periodically blankets our border skyline. These two identifying boundaries inspire the crisp edges and rounded curves seen in the artwork. Coming in at number 8 is Bunning, located here in Sydney, South East Calgary. This is one of dozens of public artworks commissioned by Calgary housing developers as part of the brand new community or new condo development as fun and unique. They love to include public art as part of their branding and creating a unique identity for the projects. A real eye-opener into Calgary's becoming a hub for public art fabrication. Sydney Bowl Pook it's an art piece that starts conversations, brings intrigue, and the fun. It's all about this body. The whimsical nine foot tall purple dog with his eyes set on the matching purple bone on the roof of this neighboring building. What a street style location. This contemporary sculpture comes with places to sit, gather, and take all in. By integrating this unique work of art in a busy medical plaza, Brookfield Residence here has figured out a way to bring color and excitement to every part of the vibrant community. Good to you, Brookfield. At number seven is the Carrot of Connection, one of my favorite public art in Calgary. Now, taking a stroll through the Carrot of Connection, connecting East Village and the emerging Victoria Park neighborhood. The Carrot of Connection is a colorful mural along First Street Southeast underpass. A beautiful stretch of wall painting by Calgary artist Mitchell Oakville. She painted this card of connection for seven weeks using 70 gallons of paint to create this 950 foot mural along both sides of this underpass. Now to my favorite, Peace Bridge, designed by Spanish architect, structural engineer, sculptor, and painter Santiago Calatrava. Peace Bridge is a bridge that accommodates people walking and cycling across the Bow River in Calgary. It was open for use to the public on March 24th, 2012. It has a popular nickname, Finger Trap Bridge, due to its visual similarity to the Finger Trap Puzzle. The bridge was built by the city of Calgary to connect the Southern Bow River Pathway and downtown Calgary with the Northern Bow River Pathway and the community of Sunnyside. This connection was designed to accommodate the increasing number of people Coming to and from work and those utilizing the Calgary's pathways. The bridge is reportedly used by 6,000 people a day, that is pre-COVID, and was ranked among the top 10 architectural projects in 2012 and among the top 10 public spaces of 2012. Coming at number five is the Bounds Games Park, and I'm here with my brother. What's Kent your name? Linton. My name is Kenton Linton. Kenton Linton. So what, what are you doing here? Just to enjoy the good day. Nice weather. Yeah. Beautiful day at the park, you know. All these guys out here enjoy their day. How often do you come here? Anytime it's nice outside, usually with my boys. So when you come, you get out with your friends, basketball, up scotch, and what else do you do? Man, pretty much who ball day. Ball is life, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ball is life. Alright guys. Keep safe. Yes, sir. 
Now, this is a multi-use games park that is located here in the East Village, a block away at the junction where 8th Avenue and 4th Street meet is a transformation of an old parking lot living his best life. You can see behind me. Known as the Bounce Games Park, this temporary pop-up games park has a full-size basketball court for both regular and 3x3 games, ping-pong tables, up scotch, four square and art mural by the artist duo Maud. Art spot for selfie lovers, good location for filmmaking like I'm doing now, an amazing place for those who love to take pictures and post on Instagram. At number four is the Iron Horse. Taking a tour of Stephen Avenue, you'll find this larger than life size of a rusting horse built almost entirely out of scrap metal. Standing outside of Salt Lake, a cargo restaurant one block away from the cargo tower. The statue was purchased by Salt Lake's owner, Stu Fuller, at an auction in 2001 and is now an iconic fixture in downtown Calgary. The sculpture was created by artist Rusa Zaid, whose works can be found in many museums and cultural buildings throughout Canada. The Iron Horse has become an iconic piece of downtown art and a favorite of photographers as well as tourists coming in contact with Calgary downtown. Coming at number three is Northern Lights. Now you can see a building behind me, so tall and curvy as it goes towards the sky. That is where the Northern Light is. Over two kilometers of custom LED lightning on the side of this massive skyscraper called Telosky in downtown Calgary will illuminate your evenings as a dancing arts installation called Northern Lights displays thousands of custom made bulbs. This installation from Canadian artist and writer Douglas Copeland was unveiled on October 24, 2021, and it's a complete light show which depicts the Aurora Boris. Northern Lights is an instant landmark attraction for Calgary, providing a dazzling displayed program with ever changing sequences that are sure to delight both residents and visitors for years to come. At number two is one of my favorite public art in Calgary, Wonderland Sculpture. Now, I love this piece of public art. You know, you can see the intricate, you know, woven works, the metal works, and it's amazing. Now, Wonderland Sculpture is a 12 meter tall public art piece, which is made by the Spanish sculptor, Jaime Plensa. Wonderland is a wire mesh sculpture of a little girl's head, which is located at the base of the tallest tower, the bowl. The major attraction of Wonderland is that visitors can walk through the model, which has two openings allowing viewers to enter. It is said that the shape of the sculpture was actually inspired by a girl in Spain, and the objective of the sculpture is to inspire everyone who sees it as a true representation of the architecture of our own bodies, the palace of our dreams. Now, the sculpture truly represents the dreams and hope of young Albanians, and here's fresh youthful energy of the tenants. The entrance to the sculpture is at the neck region, through which the viewers can wander inside and see how it looks from the inside. That is lovely. Coming at number one is my favorite, the most favorite of all the public arts in Calgary, Center Street Lions, right behind me on both sides of the bridge. The Lions of the Center Street Bridge have brought a European style class to Calgary since they were unveiled in 1916, with two facing north and two facing south. While these statues appear to be a constant in Calgary, ever since that time, they have actually had an interesting and storied history. I'm going to be sharing that history with you right here. Originally, the cost of the Center Street Bridge meant that there was going to be no decoration of any kind on it in the interest of saving money, which is cool. However, when a city alderman discovered a beautiful stone lion in front of her home in Northwest was built by a Scottish stonemason named James L. Thompson, who worked as a city laborer. It was decided that it would be temporarily reassigned to create lions for the bridge. Thompson decided to model the cats after a bronze lion found at the base of Nelson's column in Travagas Square in London and spent the winter of 1916 in a shed near this bridge in working on his 12,600 kilogram sculptures. Not only did he create the lions, but Thompson sculpted the ornaments around the lions with images to pay respect to the city's background with roses for England. 
Sand rocks for Ireland, thistles for Scotland, maple leaves for Canada, and bison egg for the West. Since the unveiling, the Center Street Lions have been exposed to cargoes at freeze and tall circles and near constant vibration from the street traffic, you know, like I'm feeling right now. This has caused them to become more and more fragile with each passing year. In 1992, the Center Street Bridge and its associated status became a municipal historic resource and next year, the lions became part of the public art collection in Calgary. By 1999, Center Street Bridge was closed for serious renovations and the lions were moved to have their conditions reassessed. After which, it was discovered that none of the original lions were fit to be installed on the bridge, but that the Southwest Lion was in best condition. Thank God for that. The Calgary Heritage Authority recommended to the city that these lions be fully restored and used to make a cast mold, which could be used to create four new status to replace the originals on the Center Street Bridge. The fully restored Southwest Lion now has a home at the entrance of Calgary Municipal Building. There are two more of the original lions that are currently being kept in storage to keep them safe from the elements. There you have it. My best 10 public art pieces in Calgary. And there's a challenge for you. Go around the city and take five pictures of your favorite public artworks in Calgary with the names and post on your social media. And tag me on my Instagram and Twitter handle as showing on the screen right now for a chance to win one of five $20 gift cards. What are you waiting for? Go ahead and let's make some money. On this note, I'm dropping the episode of today's program on My City Speaks to Me. As always, I invite you to watch this video, like and share this video and leave a comment on my page so that I know you stopped by. Until I come your way again with more exciting episodes from around Canada on My City Speaks to Me, like I do it on this show. Don't move a muscle. Stretch. See you around. Bye for now.